About five years ago, my friend Pear introduced me to Wago Nuts. W A G O Wago Nuts. Wago Nuts are pretty common in Europe. They're less common in the United States. They're an incredible lever action connector. So you lift this little snap thing up, stuff a wire in here, and then snap it closed. That work over an extremely wide range of wire gauge. I'm not kidding when I say extreme. They work from 28 gauge to 12 gauge. And that's both in stranded and solid format. So these are incredibly versatile little terminal blocks. Not only do they work from 28 to 12 American wire gauge, but they also work up to 20 amps maximum. To use them, you simply lift one of these lever arms and take your enormous or tiny wire and push it all the way in to the connector and then snap. And if you try to release this, most often, excuse me, <clears throat> you will tear the wire before you will release it from this connector. Let me try on one more piece here. This is uh, some 16 gauge speaker wire. Twist it up, uh, stripped about one centimeter back and, and put in place. I'm gonna see if I can actually get this to come out of this Wago connector. So indeed, I was able to get it to come out, but you could hear there the actual wire strands breaking. When I introduce people to Wagos, I introduce them primarily as a tool for fast prototyping. If you need to quickly make electrical connections, there is effectively nothing faster than this. You flip up a lever, stuff a wire in of basically any gauge, and you're done. You want to connect something else up to it, stuff in another wire, and you're done. You need to make a third connection, perhaps to something really tiny, like an indicator LED or something. Put it in there, and you're done. Wago connectors are basically worth their weight in gold, as far as shop stock goes. If you do any kind of electrical prototyping, or any kind of electrical installation, from car stereos to CCTV to, you know, oddball electrical prototypes, sure, you could spend the time stripping the wire, twisting it together on a proper Bellcorp connection, remembering to put the heat shrink over it, then heat shrinking it, and so on and so forth, or if you just want to try something out, you can actually connect 10 gauge to 16 gauge to 28 gauge wire in a single connection across a single bus and be happy with it for I think what amounts to 25 cents a connector. So Wagos are pretty incredible um, for a lot of reasons. A couple of mistakes that I see people make often is they see Wagos, perhaps like visiting my shop or seeing something on the internet or something like that, and they get excited about it and they buy a 50 pack of two connectors. What you encounter if you do that, which is actually what I did the very first time, is that when you go to connect things up, yeah, sure, you can connect the power supply to an incoming power cable, but then you want to connect the next thing and you don't have another connector. So in my opinion, the two connector ones are worthless. The three connectors and up are interesting. The reason to use three over five is that the fives can get kind of bulky. For example, I used the five connector, sorry, the five position connectors in installing my truck stereo, and after installing eight of these, it quickly got bulky, like the wires took up a lot of space with these connectors on the end. So sometimes it's still preferable to use only the number of positions that you need. But when you're prototyping, these actually open up kind of a new world of hooking things up. So for example, I often need to hook up an AC cord to some incoming thing. That might be a PID controller, it might be a motor, it might be a fan, it, it could be just about anything. It might be a broken piece of electronics. And what Wagos have allowed me to do is hook up a three position connector to each of the hot, the neutral, and the earth connector to a standard PC IEC cable, the industrial electrical connector, which is the other side of the standard computer cable, not this side. And I just snipped that off and stripped it, 
And I keep one of these at my electronics tool bench at all times. So if I get in something new, I'm concerned about how it works or is it gonna work or I just wanna see it light up to make sure that it works. I've got these nice labeled cables and a series of open WAGO connectors that will accept any incoming wire without soldering, without making it permanent, without otherwise wasting a lot of time. This little whip of a cable has probably saved me 10 or 15 hours just in the last, you know, year. Wagos come in a lot of forms, but the 222 lever connectors are really the deal. They're cheap on Amazon. You can get big assortments of them and keep them in stock in your shop. They let you set up anything at pretty much any amperage at basically any cable diameter for medium size prototyping. You're not going to do ultra, ultra fine work, but in that case, the other things you would encounter in these kinds of cables like capacitance, shielding effects, ground effects, other, other issues would dominate, right? These are sort of perfectly suited for their size and shape. Uh, all in all, a fantastic tool for the fast prototypers toolbox and one that allows you to quickly snap together systems that other people would spend whole days just soldering. The other big advantage of Wagos is that, coupled with a wire stripper, a scissors, or a knife, you can easily use these in the field. You might not be able to fire up your Hako or your Weller or some other soldering iron, but you can quickly bash together cables in the field, insulated, without electrical tape, without all this other stuff on the fly wherever you go. So my advice is when you buy your assortment of these on Amazon that you throw, you know, five or ten of them into your bag for future prototyping encounters.